Welcome to another week of what I realistically read as a grad student and no, we do not get summer vacation I'm actually on clinical placement right now in a small town But I have read 44 books so far this year out of my goal of 50 books So let's see if I can reach my goal by the time that the summer ends We start this hill on a random Monday evening at a park bench under a post-apocalyptic sky Hello everyone Yes, I do know that it looks like the world is ending right now But that's just because the sky here is crazy And my hair is crazy too But it was up in a bun all day, which we'll get to that too It's sunset right now, sunset, where's the sun? It's setting, but it's overcast today, but I go on a walk every single sunset. We're in the middle of a heat wave here, and there's no AC in our house. That's why I go on my sunset walks, because even though it's like low-key still hot, it's not disgusting like it was in the daytime where I actually couldn't function. I was literally just a vegetable laying on the ground. I haven't getting so many steps in though, I will say that. Let me rehash what I read over this weekend. I don't have my Kindle with me. Over the weekend, I read this novella, which is The New World by Patrick Ness, and I didn't know that this prequel existed. I just like happened upon it. I was like, I have not read that. And was that a mistake? Because then I decided to start reading The Knife of Never Letting Go, the first book. This is probably like my seventh reread of it and now i feel like i'm going back into my chaos walking like hardcore era i just love the two main characters in it so much like their relationship dynamic like the friends to lovers like oh. and so i literally have memorized their whole relationship progression and i just like jump into like the most important scenes like the most fun scenes and that is how i do my reread of it low-key i started rereading this and i was genuinely like i actually think that this book series had missed potential to be like a modern classic like I actually you guys comment below what books were like your mandatory english reading books because it like differs based on like where you are and i would love to know i feel like i had like extenuating circumstances that's dramatic i feel like i had unique circumstances because of like how i moved schools and like the programs that i was in i was in a gift school in middle school this whole story is going to be talking about how i never read romeo and juliet by shakespeare by the way in my grade seven class read romeo and juliet which i feel like it's like really early to read romeo and juliet but i feel like because we we're a gifted class they let us read it however i moved to a different school for like three months for the first three months of grade seven which is a long story but if you know me and you're my friend in middle school then you know the lore anyway i moved and i moved back to my gifted school because i liked it way better than the other school i was at the classes were more fun the teachers were better so i moved back after three months this part is not pertinent to grade seven and grade eight it becomes pertinent in grade nine we are in grade nine english class guess what every single other grade nine english class is reading romeo and juliet guess what our class collectively decided not to read romeo and juliet why because we already read it in grade eight grade seven except for one person who was the one person who didn't read it because she was off to another school so yeah i never read romeo and juliet grade nine was actually a circus show our english teacher in grade nine for some reason left i don't know what happened like she was just like on leave and no one told us what happened to her so actually i didn't read anything in grade nine like i feel like you're supposed to read animal farm grade 10 was when we read to kill a mockingbird which to this day to kill a mockingbird is like one of my favorite books i've ever read actually i watched the play version of it at mervish theater in toronto because randomly my friend like got free tickets to it and she invited me to go i was like that's so nice and like little do you know that i'm a hardcore to kill a mockingbird reader like you don't even know what you've unlocked i have a crush on gregory peck who played Atticus Finch in like the black and white movie. That man was fine, fine. Oh, okay, I think I just figured out my origin story for single dads. Anyway, next, grade 11 is when we had our dystopia unit, which that was fun because our class was the only class who really, I think, like got to choose our own book. So there was like The Handmaid's Tale, Brave New World, Fahrenheit, for I don't know, a lot of the famous ones. I chose to read this one that I've never heard of before. It was called The Wind Up Girl. I don't know how this book was like approved to be read in like a high school public classroom because when i tell you that it's like traumatic i think that was actually the first like messed up book i've ever read in my life also it's like probably this fat for a grade 12 novel city literally you could choose anything that you want i chose jane eyre by charlotte bronte i chose it because actually regan from peru's project on youtube because i've been like a hardcore booktube fan since like middle school she just like mentioned in passing one time that she read jane eyre when she was in grade 12 and that she loved it because it like the themes and like what happens in the book like coincides really well with like what you experience in grade 12 ever since i heard that i like had decided that i was going to read jane eyre when i was in grade 12 Sorry, that was a long tangent but i've been like low-key wanting to make these vlogs like longer because i made like so many of these like what i read in a week vlogs and i feel like like they're like so short um and it's because i like cut out a lot of my yapping because i yap so much i'm like literally no one wants to hear you yap. however i've decided that i kind of want to make them longer <laughs> um so i guess i don't actually care okay so i completely forgot the other book that i read this past weekend was another reread it was a thousand perfect notes by cg drews the reason is because i uploaded my second no spice book recommendations and i talked about it in that and it made me like have the urge to reread that book and i did and i finished it and it was so good obviously everyone go read it and go watch that video if you haven't so i read that this weekend and then i also started um a river enchanted by rebecca ross i don't know why i decided that i just like randomly want to start that new book i dnf'd it again i think i was like 20 percent of the way through but this is my second time dnf'ing that book and i 
actually forgot that I tried reading it the first time. And I think it's because her writing has a fairy tale, like folk tale ish quality to it, which is like really beautiful and sets the vibes, but it feels like a bit disconnected from the characters. So I guess right now my current read is just The Knife Never Letting Go, which I think I'm at like 7% of the way through. It's 7.04. Go to clinic. What am I focusing so hard on at my computer? You might ask, is it schoolwork? Is it work work? You would be wrong. It is actually <laughs> this season of The Bachelorette. When I tell you that Marcus from this season has me Googling his age and trying to get over a nine year age gap. If I was Jen The Bachelorette, I would have literally gone on my knees and proposed to him right then and there, the second that he got out of that limousine. And before you guys come at me for watching The Bachelorette when I should be working, I literally come into the office at the butt crack of dawn just so I can watch stuff like this, or I sit there and read, or I watch the Olympics. Honestly, I'm loving my little reread after the prequel because the prequel is actually from the girls POV from before the story starts and I would actually die for the entire first book to be in her POV. Okay, for some reason my mic wasn't working so I need to film this again but I am 19% of the way through the knife of never letting go. Also, I want everyone to comment below what their favorite snack in the Humpty Dumpty party mix is because mine are these. I feel like I really have like cravings for things well, except for like three things these yogurt cover pretzels and chips and queso the last one i haven't had a craving for that in like years but there are specific actors or like specific actors in specific movies where i don't know why it's not even like a hyper fixation but it's a certain type of acting like a very like subtle i don't even know how to explain it it's just like not cringy acting and i feel like i get cringed out really really easily and something about it will just like stick in my head and i'm like picturing that and like that exact character dynamic or like that exact like chemistry dynamic as like book characters so my most famous one famously is young Colin Ford and young Al Fanning from the We Bought a Zoo movie, like the kids from that movie. I like picture them as like pretty much everything that I can. Quiet boy, sunshine girl vibe. I'm like, perfect. I discovered a new one. Okay, I didn't discover it, but I'm applying it for the first time here, which is Walker Scobell. It has that same vibe. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know, very like subtle acting vibes and just like good chemistry. Like the other actors, like him and Leah, he would eat if there was an age accurate adaptation of this. And again, I feel like I've missed my calling on becoming like a casting director. Like, I don't know what qualifications you need. I feel like I'll become freaking Dennis the Menace. For me, it'll be like the same energy of like, I didn't want to become a teacher just because I want to like match make in my class. I make my little seating arrangements. It's like that same energy, you know what I mean? If there are any teachers out there, oh my gosh, the way that will make these hoes fall in love is insane. I came home yesterday and I accidentally fell asleep at like 5 p.m. and I missed my therapy appointment, A. Eh? Can't happen again today because I have another meeting today. Page 233. I love like seeing the first instances of Todd like protecting the girl, like developing that relationship. <sighs> I'm gonna go eat breakfast. That's what it looks like outside. When I tell you guys that I actually wear the same clothes every single day, especially my pants. Like I didn't bring any pants. So anyway, this is the fit. Also the Japan, I don't know who they're playing, but I'm obsessed with the Japanese volleyball team. So I'm gonna walk to the clinic and see if I can watch the game. I think it's already started. I'm like not a very sporty person, but the sport that I did play in high school was volleyball. Even though I'm not that good at it, like I'm not really competitive enough. I just like, like rallying a volleyball. Oh my God, that reminds me that I caught up with one of my friends from undergrad. I'm joined like his little friend group of going camping in August and a lore about me that I feel like no one knows about, not even like my bestest friends from like post middle school they don't know about this because it would never come up but me and my family we would go camping like every single week when i was a kid like when i tell you that that's the only thing i did as a kid is go camping and go hiking and everyone is so shocked by this because i don't seem like it at all i'm like not a big like nature like outdoorsy girl at all i talked to my dad about this actually he told us every single hiking trail that was like within driving distance from our childhood home me and my sisters have probably hiked <laughs> And it's funny because all my outdoorsy friends are like so impressed by that. When I tell you that I didn't sleep in hotel at all as a kid, we always went camping. We didn't go on vacation, we went camping. We literally have like a premium annual like membership to campgrounds so that we could just go camping. Every single type of camping you could ever imagine. We went winter camping, tent camping, cabin camping, RV camping. It's because my dad loves camping so much. And when we were a kid, he could just like tell us what to do. We would just follow him. <laughs> when I tell you that like for weeks, like we literally lived in our backyard because we would just go camping in our backyard. But I think back now and I'm like, that is like so cute. Like I, that's so cute that we did that. Even though I like am not a big camper now, I'm like actually really glad that he did it because I didn't realize that there are some people who in their adult life have never gone camping. Comment below if you guys have gone camping or like how often you would go camping camping because I thought it was normal that every single kid goes camping like every single week but when I tell you that I did not lift a single finger when we would go camping so I don't know like any like camp skills and I think that it made me super low maintenance and like kind of unhygienic as a kid which I think is a good thing because now I'm pretty much invincible in terms of my immune system I get sick once a year I am convinced that I'm a transformer and I think it's because I was an unhygienic kid I'm still super low maintenance now I think even other people agree I think I've actually had to work to become higher maintenance in my adulthood because I would be judged and shamed by my same age peers 
this oh my god i'm like in such a mess with my clinical coordinator i don't even want to get into it it like gave me anxiety i had anxiety all of like yesterday that's another reason why i just fell asleep because i was like overwhelmed it's a new day today though and i can distract myself i don't even think i explained what this book is about although i have talked about it to death on my channel if you've been on my channel it's like post-apocalyptic dystopia like colonialism vibes you know back home not because i finished my day it's actually lunch time and my friend drove me home because i needed to change my top i was wearing that white one i don't know what happened i realized that i accumulated like another like, mystery stain not like a stain stain but just like a dot or something it was just like a dot of brown i went to the clinic and i tried scrubbing it out and it turns out i actually made it worse I don't know when people just like teach you how to erase stains because my mom is like so good at it But I guess I'm like not of age yet because I literally made it worse and then it just became like a big stain So I put my name tag to here to cover it up Um, A girl at camp gave me all these stickers to put on my name tag But my friend was like I'm taking my lunch break now. Do you want me to drive you anywhere? I said actually Do you know what would be so lovely is if you drive me home so I can change my shirt Now I have an hour to kill Oh my gosh wait actually I made oatmeal like protein oatmeal. It's in a yogurt container. Maybe I'll just eat that now. Now I changed my top and it's all good. But I'm sad because I loved that white top. It better come out. Also, I've been cutting myself so much like by accident, which is weird because I actually think that before this point, I had not cut myself in probably like actually years. First of all, the knife that we have in this house is like so dull to the point that it's like dangerous, I feel like. But this is from actually trying to open cottage cheese. Don't ask. I think I'm going to read more of my book. I think I see my ride. After the day at the clinic, I had about an hour to kill before I would need to go again for bike camp in the evening time And I spent that time reading literally the way that it was so hot that I literally looked like a carrot Just sitting there on my chopping board accepting my fate in my vegetative state But you know what? I cannot explain to you how biblically I need people to read this book If you love like a friends to lovers, highly devoted soulmate type bond that like transcends even friends to lovers Why do I look like the spoon emoji slash the moon emoji slash the egg emoji? Because it is so hot Do you know the viral like fluffy yogurt? Yogurt that's going around. I made like fluffy yogurt and then I put it in our freezer at lunch and now it's literally ice cream. Actually, it's better than ice cream. This is like now my favorite dessert. Also, our supervisor bring us an AC unit. Our clinic has a bike camp and I'm helping out with it in the evening. Oh my god, I'm gonna get so hot. The way that the main character, Todd, was serving this, don't you look at her, I yell, don't you even look at her, in like the first book after they meet, I'm sick. Oh. I, honest to god, feel like people are sleeping so hard on this book series as like the best touch her and I kill you book series. The progression of it is like so slow burn and so, so, so good. I feel like anyone who's craving like a Persebeth type level of like friendship and devotion and like commitment you guys need to tap in next clip i'm gonna have finished this book six out of five stars obviously such a good book series it's so slept on now it's time for chaos walking book two the slow burn is slow burning so well i feel like there are certain books that are written clearly just to fit a trope like just to appease a trope do you know what i mean and when it's like that i find it cringy and i don't care about it i don't like the characters it doesn't make me feel anything because there's not like any deeper level to it and it's not like really grounded in anything other than just the trope that it is this doesn't feel like that this feels like genuine to the trope you know what i mean and this is the day that a good girl's guide came onto netflix so you know that i had to watch do i know you no just Oh my gosh, Emma Myers and Zayn. Oh my, the chemistry was like chemistry. I will not lie to you. Also, this is the height difference that we deserve. Listen. Anyway, guys, I started watching Good Girl's Guide to Murder because it came onto Netflix today. Also, I'm eating my ice cream again. Ice cream. The girl from Wednesday. Doesn't she look like Maddie Ziegler to anyone? I'm like, would it be socially acceptable to go on my walk in my PJs? Am I really gonna see anyone? No one's gonna be around. On a sadder note, my friend's dog actually passed away like this day. And so this is me making like a card for her. Also, I wanna start answering questions that you guys have in these like weekly vlogs, like maybe a question a week. So feel free to leave any of your questions that you have down below in the comments and I'll pick one and answer. A lot of people ask like, you have a secret boyfriend, you're single, whatever, just like about my relationship status. I do not have a boyfriend. And fun fact, I have never had a boyfriend. I'm boy sober. I've been boy sober for 23 years of my life And not only have I never had a boyfriend I've literally never even like gotten close Like I wouldn't say that I've ever been in like a talking stage and I've never really liked anyone before like liked anyone enough I've never propositioned before like people who have propositioned me I obviously didn't like them enough and so I would just say like no you guys know that I'm hyper independent So I feel like it would take a lot a lot for me to like put someone in my life who I think would add to just me being on my own because honestly competing for my company like you're competing against me 
and like low-key like no one has won that battle that's the question for today you guys can ask your questions and i'll answer one of them next time also i think that the main things that i look for are things that a person you genuinely wouldn't know until they're like late 20s like stuff like financial stability and work ethic and like sense of responsibility stuff like that even though i am a hopeless romantic i feel like i'm like weirdly pragmatic about my own relationship and like real relationships like not fictional ones i feel like having immigrant parents might do that to you like it really makes you see that it takes way more than love to make a marriage work i am heavy on the mentality that just because you're attracted to someone doesn't mean that you like them just because you like them doesn't mean you date them just because you love someone doesn't mean that you marry them i also think it's worth it to say that i've never once ever in my life felt ashamed embarrassed or insecure about being boy sober like i feel like a lot of girls feel like that i honestly have never felt like that before not gonna lie Good morning happy friday sorry my hair is kind of crazy so i washed it yesterday let me give you a book update because i started the ask and the answer yesterday i'm already 30 percent of the way through i'm on page 145 this is one of those second book in the series where the two main characters are separated for like most of it i'm just like waiting for them to get back together every other line is just when can i see him when can i see her the devotion in this book is genuinely next level and i feel like everyone is sleeping on it so hard now, some of the things that happen in this book is actually so messed up so messed up if if you love the trope of like like he is being controlled because they're threatening to hurt the only person that he cares about also my toxic trait problem is that i impulsively chop my hair with kitchen scissors every couple of months even though i always regret it i did it again a couple days ago that's why my hair looks like this i didn't chop any of the length i just chopped like long layers into my hair you guys tell me if it looks good from the back you guys probably can't tell because it's curly right now but don't do as I do. Okay, I just finished my research meeting. Yes, I took that meeting in my pajamas. She probably had no idea. Even if she did, I don't think she would care. Because you guys know, during the school year, I was doing research and I'm still doing that. It's 4 p.m. now. It is hot. <laughs> oh, I need to watch the Olympic Games. I hope that they're still on the Japanese volleyball team. Because I'm keeping up with the Japanese men's volleyball team. I love the captain of that team. Like, I'm actually in love with him. The fact that he's the captain, like, first of all, he's such a smart player. Second of all, it's the fact that he's the captain, like, the sense of leadership and, like, passion and, like, dedication, devotion, and work ethic that you need to get to the Olympics. Like, that to me is, like, so attractive. Like, are you kidding me? It's Japan versus the US. US is up by two sets. Oh, no. Sorry to all my American subscribers, which is most of you guys, but I am in fact rooting for Japan. However, I am gonna keep up with the US basketball team, the men's basketball team, because that roster is crazy. Happy Saturday. I once again had a dream where I fell in love with like the love of my life and then I woke up from my dream. Once again, I think I fell asleep for like 12 hours. I slept at like 6 p.m. I fell asleep while I was reading and then I woke up. Actually, I woke up earlier than this, but I went back to sleep because I wanted to keep falling in love. I'm at page 248, just 52% of the way through. I always knew that the main character of this book, Todd, he's a really like not that likable main character because first of all, this man has like anger issues. But he does like become better. Like he becomes more likable literally because of the girl in this. Like that is the reason why. But in this book, they're like apart and I feel like he's becoming like more unhinged than ever and they like need to get back together. He kind of had to have his comeuppance. I'm not gonna lie to you. I am going to eat my breakfast because you know when you like sleep for 12 hours without eating or drinking anything and then you wake up and you're literally a shell. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go on my sunrise walk. There's so many motorbikes here. The weather here is like actually insane. Like what the hell is the weather here? Like what in the climate change? All of this week was like a disgusting heat. Literally like 38. It was 38 degrees. Sorry, I'm Canadian. So I don't really know what that is in Fahrenheit. Actually, I will search up the Fahrenheit. 38 degrees is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That was like this week. Tomorrow, it's going to be 68 degrees. You guys do with that information what you will. Anyway, this is what I read for this week. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Love you. Subscribe down below. Follow me on my socials. They're linked in the description. Bye.